Bubsy Twofer is a game that nobody asked for, nobody wanted, and everybody got anyways. I've seen people say that they're really good, whereas others say that they're kind of crap. Uh, no. World hunger. Nuclear proliferation. Reality TV. None of those horrors compared to... Yarn Ball Deprivation! I've been waiting to settle this score since 1993. Fuzzy, the Woolies Strike Back by Accolade. F I fing called it! Bubsy, 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 Bobcat! Okay, well, that was kind of entertaining, and I don't hate the pun that you did there. So far, so good, but I'm not getting my expectations up too high. Huh, I guess I ran out of puns. I'll be back! Nope! Gotcha! So we start out with Bubsy in some sort of museum, I guess? And he can either choose to go to the East or West Wing. I choose East first, I guess. Wait, who the hell are these two? Are they like Bubsy clones or something? Maybe it's like some Alice in Wonderland-esque kind of thing? Alright, I dig it so far. By the way, in a fast story, go! Bubsy goes to the museum, he's asked up an evil pig, the end. So now we're in some sort of hub world and we get to choose from five different levels. There's a medieval level, a music level, an Egyptian level, a space pirate level, which is apparently a thing, and a plane level? Okay, I guess. I'm gonna start with the medieval level. <laughs> Okay, stop. I'm already at a moral standstill. That, that's a, that's a great sign right there. Okay, let's talk about what Bubsy 2 did right. The biggest thing that they got right was that they didn't make Bubsy out of glass this time, meaning that he doesn't die in one hit. That alone makes it better than the first Bubsy game. The controls, while a little weird at first, are better in the sense that every button actually does something. Instead of A and X being jump and glide, now it's B and Y, which took some time getting used to, but I eventually got the hang of it. The game is also a lot less floaty now, and all the button presses are more direct with less delay. There's also more control in the air, being able to change your direction even without gliding. The enemy placement is also more fair. Not much of a difference, but since Bubsy can actually take a hit, it's a little better. There's also less instant death traps, and they're easier to see thanks to the fact that the camera seems more zoomed out in this game. This makes the game not easier, but more fair, and it really made me think that this game was actually going to be not only a good sequel, but a good game. And they go through the rest of the game and realize it's just a bunch of poopy goop. Here's why this game sucks. So since B and Y were jump and glide, what do X and A do? Well now, Bubsy has a wide assortment of items and weapons at his disposal. The X button sets the item, and the A button uses the item. This may sound good on paper, but they all suck. First, there's the Nerf gun. No, no, you're not hearing that wrong. Accolade partnered with Nerf to put this gun in the game. And it is garbage. It doesn't even work like half the time, and when it does, it does way less damage than just jumping on enemies. Then there's the Deku Nut. It's supposed to be a flashbang, I think, but it doesn't do anything except produce a big flash. So it's a damn Deku nut. Then there's the scuba gear. I never once used this except for flipping some switches, which yes, there are plenty of in this game. Finally, there's the pocket hole. I seriously have no idea what this does. Bubsy just takes it out, shakes it off, and then puts it back in his pocket. I may be doing stuff wrong, I don't know. You don't need any of these items to beat the game, in fact I recommend you don't use any of these items at all, it is just an extra confusing step. Then there's the music. Oh my god, the music. In the first game it was fine for what it was, but in this game it's almost unbearable at some points. <laughs> So in the first Bubsy game, every once in a while, you'd enter a door and go through this mini-game where Bubsy is on a lava slide collecting yarn. 
They were okay for what they were, but there was only one in a level at most, so it never felt like it was taking away from the core gameplay, especially since I could basically leave the minigame at any point. In Bubsy 2, however, there's an overabundance of useless, monotonous, and tedious minigames. You've got Frogapole, a game where you launch frogs onto things to get points, Scuba, where you collect bubbles underwater, and this minigame happens every time you land in the water, and the truck game where you WHO THE HECK IS THIS?! So apparently, there was a failed Bubsy cartoon pilot that came out not too long after Bubsy 1, but before Bubsy 2, and this game has characters from the cartoon show. Those two Bubsies at the beginning of the game were Bubsy's niece and nephew. This armadillo is Bubsy's pet slash friend, Arnold, who has a fear of trucks for some reason. The pilot sucks, and I may be covering it in the near future. So back to the minigame. It sucks, and the music sucks also. This is probably my least favorite game since it's the one that pops up the most. So let's go level by level. The medieval level is actually a pretty good way to start out the game. It's okay for teaching people the moves and it's pretty fair. Medieval fair! <laughs> the plane level, while a little weird at first, is also fine. It's short so that may help it. Now we're getting into the real shit. The space pirate level has the best music, and it actually gives Bubsy controls that make him feel like he is in space, which is a nice touch. But it is so confusing getting around, and I sometimes had no idea where I was going or what I was supposed to be doing. The music level, ironically, has the worst music of any level. It's a bunch of random noises and sounds. But take the confusing layout of the space pirate level and multiply it by 10 and you've got the music level. It's so bad, but it is a damn godsend compared to the Egyptian level. It's filled with small corridors, enemies everywhere, and the most bullshit time padding mechanic. So a section of the level is cut off for some reason, and you can't get to that section for some reason. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Apparently, you have to find the lion statue in one of these window-like structures and press up. How the hell was I supposed to know that? HOW IS ANYONE SUPPOSED TO KNOW THAT?! You know what, whatever. I beat all the levels on this floor and now the boss door is open. Let's see how it goes. But whatever, I beat the first boss, onto the second floor. Let's check out the levels we got. There was a medieval level, a plane level, a music level, a space pirate- Wait, really? I mean, is this really what we're sticking with? The levels themselves aren't really even that different than the previous levels. I mean, I could go on about them, but the problems that I had with the previous levels equally apply to these levels as well. Boss 2 time, here we go! Okay, the third floor of the East Wing, we've got a medieval level, a plane level, a music- Oh, come on! This isn't cutting corners, this isn't even reusing parts of levels, this is just plain lazy. It's like the designers were like, Okay, we got five levels made, and only three weeks until release. Let's just copy and paste the levels and we'll be fine. Bosses? We'll just put a bunch of weak enemies in a room and call the boss. That's a wrap! Bubsy 2! Game of the Year Edition! It's also worth noting that I got stuck in this Egyptian level for almost 30 minutes, not because I got lost or anything, but because there was a pot of water I got stuck in for so damn long. Every time I tried to get out of that pot, I got stuck right back in. I tried jumping, landing, using items, nothing worked. I got Bubsy 2 for a safe stage, but we'll get to that later as well! Final boss time, here we go! Finally, an actual boss! I've been looking forward to this. Let's see how it goes. Are you kidding me? There you go, that's Bubsy 2 in a nutshell. Now you're probably like, well what about the West Wing? There's still an entire half of the game you haven't played yet. Oh, I played that half. You wanna know about the West Wing? You should already know about it by now though. Because it's literally just the East Wing. It's a copy 
and paste of the East Wing. Same levels, same bosses, same final boss, same ending. Bubsy 2's levels are reasonably shorter than Bubsy 1's levels, and because of that, 15 Bubsy 2 levels take about half the time it takes to complete 15 Bubsy 1 levels. So why not just copy and paste the same levels so that it tricks you into playing the same game twice with absolutely no difference whatsoever? In bird culture, this is considered a dick move. So which game was better? Well, Bubsy 1 had a better premise, better music, and just looked better than Bubsy 2 with more diverse levels. But gameplay-wise, Bubsy 2 blew Bubsy 1 out of the water, fixing its camera and layout problems, as well as making Bubsy more resilient to pain. That being said, Bubsy 2 was way more lazy in the other departments compared to Bubsy 1. So it's really a lesser of two evils type thing. Do you play the game that's so bad and utterly broken, or the game that feels like it's going to put you to sleep with its monotony? Let's finish this off by talking about what Retroism did to make this compilation diverse from the actual other two games. Well, as I said before, they added save states, and there's a neat little menu that lets you choose what game you want to play at the beginning. Where's the rest? Yeah, where's the rest? I f*** you right where you breathe, because I don't give two shits about you or nobody else. <laughs> I understand that a compilation isn't a complete remake, and that's fine. But you could have added something, anything to this. It literally looks like you ran Bubsy 1 and 2 through an SNES emulator and called it a game. And that's what they did! According to the Retroism Twitter page, they're running Bubsy 2 for on the SNES 9X emulation program. And there's a little controversy behind it. <laughs> According to them, they asked for permission to use the code from the SNES 9X emulator for the game. But according to a Twitter conversation, while they did get some permission, they did not get permissions from everyone, which did land them in some hot water. I'll put a link to the Twitter conversation below in the description. And that's Bubsy Twofer. I don't really know how to end this video. I'm honestly just done with Bubsy for now. He's drained me so much. I'll see you again in like a year when we cover Bubsy 3D on the PS1. Best game ever. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more Bubsies. There's Bubsy on the Atari Jaguar, Bubsy on the Game Boy, another Bubsy on the PC. So much Bubsy. Bubsy forever. <laughs> this game sucks.